Yeah! All right. Okay, guys. Y'all ready for another fun one? Man, today's going to be a good lesson. Today's going to be a good lesson. Oh, terrible mistake. Microphone was way down there. Let's get this guy up and into play. Whew. What's the point in having a good mic if we don't have it up here to use, right? All right. Let's see. We got some people coming in. All right. Looks like we've got a couple people coming in. Good. Excellent. Well, then. It's about that time, guys. It's about that time for us to get started on the very best part of your day. In fact, probably your week, your whole week, maybe even the month, your year, or your entire life. Because there is a non-zero chance that today's lesson is literally going to change the trajectory of your entire life moving forward. Don't believe me yet? That's okay. I totally understand. However, if you'd like to give yourself the best possible chance of really seeing great improvement from today's lesson, and even more importantly, getting the maximum amount of enjoyment out of this week's stream, if you would like to take this up to reach the height of humanity, the culmination of all of civilization, all you need to do is grab your glass, your mug, or your flask, a chalice, a stein, or even a cask. Raise it high, let's make a splash. It's time now for our libation bash. Toast the night and enjoy the mood. Together now we drink some booze. On your mark, let's not wait. It's cheers with chaps, so don't be late. Go. Oh, nice. I have the um, the representatives beer today. Depio means representative, like in the Senate. I have the, the, the senator's beer today. So cheers, Sabi. What's up, buddy? Mmm, delicious. All right, now. And cheers, Paul. Now, let's go ahead and, you know what? I'm going to make us full screen for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. You guys ready to get started? Today, I am dealing directly with... Uh, by the way, uh, Paul, could you do me a favor? Try hitting something on the screen. Like, try putting one of the comments up. I want to see if I'll be able to see it while I'm on full screen. Yep, perfect. Awesome. So, while people are making comments and things like that, if you feel like it's a worthy addition, throw it in there. Paul is in the background being my my lovely assistant. He's being my Vanna White uh, co-host in the back. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Now, I got a message last week from a client of mine. And his message was really heartbreaking. He sent me a message at first, and he's like, Hey, man, great news. I got, I got a match on... I don't even remember which app it was, Bumble, Hinge, something. I got a match on here, and I have a date scheduled with this girl for tomorrow. I'm so excited for it. And I was like, that's great, man. Great news. Let me know how it goes. And then about 10 minutes later, I get a message saying, she unmatched me. This is why girls are terrible. Jack, why did she unmatch me? So I thought to myself, you know what? That's a really damn good question. I can't answer it for you exactly because I don't know exactly what was said, exactly how the conversation went, anything like that. However, what I can do is I can give you a primer on female psychology and attraction. Now, I have had my fair share of unmatches as well uh, back in the day when I was using the online dating apps. And it is a really, really demoralizing and disheartening thing to happen whenever you match with a girl and you think, you know what, this girl seems really cool, she seems really interesting, we seem to be getting along well, and then she's gone. Like a fucking magician. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break this lesson down into three parts. First, we're going to talk about the most common mistakes that guys make whenever they're texting girls. Second, 
we're going to talk about the female psychology and why those different things are so important, why these mistakes are important to avoid. And finally, we're going to go into what you can do now, immediately, starting today, to make this better, to reduce the amount of unmatching you get, and to increase your match-to-date ratio, which is really what you want. Just not getting unmatched is not enough. It only counts if you're actually getting her on a date, right? So that's what I'm here to do today. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, let's talk about some of the mistakes that guys make, some of the most common mistakes that guys make. The first mistake that guys make is that they are boring. They're boring, boring, boring. Oh my God. Sometimes whenever I see the messages that guys send to girls, I'm just like, why? Why would you even think that this could possibly work? I see guys send something like, hi, hey, what's up? You having a good day? Something like that. <sighs> You're boring. You're boring. Now, that's not an indictment on you about you being boring. That's an indictment on your messages. Your messages are boring. Why are they boring? You might be wondering, because if you are in a situation where you're regularly getting unmatched, you are probably thinking to yourself, you know what? Every time that I'm on Bumble, a girl just messages me and she just says, hi, hey, what's up? How's your day going? Or something like that, right? So shouldn't it be the same the other way around? No, no, it's not. Do you know why? Because she has tits and you don't. That's the reason why. Because men are hunters, men are chasers. You know all this to be true naturally. You know this instinctively. It's not equal. It's not the same. Men and women are not the same. And the expectations for you in the dating market are very different from the expectations for her in the dating market. Why? Because she can walk into any bar in town and say, hey, I'm out here trying to find some dick. Who's interested? And every hand in the bar goes up. You try that. Right. Doesn't work that way, does it? So that's right. The standards for you are higher than they are for her. Oh, but Jack, that's not fair. Okay, cool. Right? Like you, you can have an AI girlfriend instead. Or you can actually learn how to do better. You cannot be boring. So instead of sending, hi, hey, what's up? Well, we're going to get to all that in a minute. The other part of this is that they're too slow. I've seen this mistake a thousand times. Guys will start a conversation. They match with a girl, even if it's on Bumble, right? She messages first. She's interested. She wants to see what's going on. What's on offer here? And then you start talking to her about some boring interview bullshit. So, uh, like, you have any, like, brothers or sisters? Uh, like... What's your job? What do you do? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, Simba, stop. And you're just, you're talking about boring shit that's not important. That first of all, you shouldn't be talking about period because who cares? And second, because it's just not interesting. Why would you be talking about any of this stuff if you're not on a date? And even on the date, I wouldn't talk about any of this stuff anyway. But especially not when you're first messaging her. It's too slow and it's uninteresting. In other words, it's boring. Now, real quick thing I want to touch on here, just so that you guys know, if you're not sure if a message of yours is boring or not, this is what you need to do. This is your test, your litmus test to find out, is this message I'm about to send boring? Here's what you do. Ask yourself, do other guys send this exact same message? If the answer is yes, then it's boring. Because anything that's common is boring. Anything that is the same as everybody else is boring. So you can't be doing that. You have to be more interesting and you have to not be so slow. But what you view as slow, she views as boring. That's why I put these two together. Our next one is guys get over eager. Now, this is a little bit of a weird one because... I absolutely recommend getting off the app as quick as possible and getting into the date as quick as possible. However, that doesn't mean that as soon as you match, you send a girl a message and you say, hey, 
You and I'd make a cute couple. Let's go for a date here, this time, this place. Go. It can work, especially if you're actually calibrated. Listen, don't ask me how women are able to suss out things like that over text message, but they can. They can sniff out the exact same wording from a desperate dude as opposed to a high status dude. It might have something to do with the pictures, the bio, things like that. Some some level of congruence beyond those. And yes, that's right, guys. I'm going to be talking about congruence again today, just like I always do, because it's the most important thing you'll ever learn. But they know. So if you're already getting lots of dates, then you can afford to play fast and loose with the rules and jump in with your first message like that. However, if you're watching this because you're regularly getting unmatched, that's not you, is it? So you can't do that. You need to open up with something a little bit more interesting, a little bit wittier, a little bit more fun, a little bit more to the point, and don't be too overeager. The next one, poor communication. Guys, I've seen this a lot. By poor communication, I don't just mean slow messaging, but we'll get to that bit in a bit with the mistiming. However, I'm talking about if a girl asks you a question, then that means she's interested in the answer. And if you give her some kind of either one word answer or you go off topic or you go the other way and you're like, here is my diatribe about all this stuff, my manifesto about how important it is to whatever, right? Like, who cares? Stop, stop. You're not understanding the situation. You're not reading the situation correctly. If a girl asks you a question, then you should be able to give her an answer. And it should be fun. It should be engaging. It should be enticing. It should be uh, anything other than boring. And it needs to deliver some kind of message. Whether that's a clear answer to what she asked, like, for example... If she says, so, where are you taking me on Friday night? Actually, in that example, I would definitely play it up a bit. And I would, I would add on a bunch of frills and make that one a little bit more interesting. But if she asks something more direct, then you can just give her the answer. Or you can play with it. Or you can make her guess. Or you can make it a surprise. Or you can do lots of different things. However, what you can't do is whenever she says something like, so tell me about yourself. And you say, well, my name is Jack. Uh, I, I help guys date on YouTube. What? Right? Like bad communication. You absolutely cannot do that. You need to learn how to actually have a good communication style. The next one, mistimed messaging. So what are you up to? is a very different question when asked at 2 p.m. or at 2 a.m. You need to understand the time of your message. You need to understand the speed of your message. You need to understand how a conversation happens and what you are communicating to her with those messages. Overeager can also go along the lines of continuing the conversation after you plan the date. Yes, absolutely. The more you keep texting after the date is planned, the more likely you are to mess it up. Yes, yes, good point, Crow, absolutely. When you're being overeager and you set the date and then you're like, oh, okay, well, I want her to keep paying attention to me. Attention feels good. So, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about, doesn't work, doesn't work well. Listen, every, once the deal is already set, the date is set, all you can do now is fuck it up. So don't do that. Just stop. Say, okay, great. I'll see you at this time at this place. I'll see you then. Or I'll pick you up at this time. Or I'll meet you at this station. Or whatever, whatever your situation is. You just do that. Leave it there. And then you don't need to say anything else until the day of the date. Then a couple of hours before, you send something like, Hope you're excited. Tonight's going to be the most epic first date you've ever had in your life. By the way, be ready be ready for drinking or be ready for be ready for a big surprise or something like that. whatever, right? That's that that's a different thing though. That's a different thing. So, 
mistimed messaging and uh, the bad timing of certain messages. If she's answering back quickly and she's giving you a lot to work with, she is interested. She's hot. And I don't mean hot. I mean, the iron is hot. You need to go ahead and strike right now. So if she's messaging you a lot, you guys are talking back and forth quickly. Let's say you exchange five messages. Five messages is a good rule of thumb that if you've exchanged five messages, you need to be setting up the date now. Now. Don't wait until it cools off. If you wait until it cools off, she's lost interest already. So check the timing, check the pacing, make sure that you understand all of this stuff. If you guys are talking quickly and she's asking you a bunch of questions, say, you know what, listen, I really appreciate this, but I don't like trying to get to know somebody over an app or over text. Let's talk about it on our date instead. Let's meet Friday at this place. Okay, good. Now, for timing, for timing, while we're on this subject, if you're timing your date, when should you set the date for? If you are old enough to remember Seinfeld, uh, they had the three-day rule in Seinfeld. Now, this is a long time ago. This is way back in the day. And the three-day rule was if you get a girl's phone number, you shouldn't call her for three days to show that you're not desperate, right? Okay. That was the rule in the 90s. However, everything has changed since then. Now we still have a three-day rule, but it's different. Now the three-day rule is from the time you first speak, you have 72 hours to have that date set up and be on the date. Any longer than that, and she's going to lose interest in you. If you start talking to her on a Monday, then you need to set up something on, on the weekdays. You need to. Because even Friday, it's like, oh, four days away. That is really pushing it. That's really pushing it. If you go longer than a week out, then your chances of actually getting out on the date drop to about 10%. If you schedule within the, within the first three days, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I actually went through... Um, all of my past messages and I checked to see like how long was it from first talking to getting her out on a date and then did that actually happen? Did the date actually materialize? And if I had scheduled it within the first 72 hours, it was something like 80 or 90%. It was a really, really high conversion rate. But if I tried to schedule it in that four to seven day period after that, it dropped to about 50%. And after seven days, it dropped to about 10%. So Really, you have about 72 hours from first contact to being out on a date. That's your goal with the timing. And the last one, I don't want to harp on this, guys. That pick, don't do it. Don't do it. No matter how impressive you think it is. No matter how much you think, oh, she wants to, though. Oh, she's interested. Even if she asks for it, don't do it. Don't do it. No. No. Under no circumstances. And I, I actually mean no circumstances. There's no way that that is ever going to increase your chances at all. Do not send that pic. All right. Now... Let's move on to the female psychology portion. Cheers, boys. Ugh. Female psychology. What is it then that she's looking for? We've gone through some of the mistakes that guys make, but what is she looking for? How, how does any of this relate? Well, the first thing she wants is she wants mystery, right? She wants to not know what's coming next. She wants a surprise. If, um, if you offered her $100 or a mystery box that could be anything, even $100, people choose the mystery box because we like surprises. We like the unknown. We like finding out. We like, we're naturally very curious. And so use that. Play into it. Say less than is necessary. In almost any situation, you can make it more interesting, more intriguing, more mysterious. If she asks me what my job is and I say, listen, 
I'm not allowed to tell you exactly what it is. But all I can say is I get paid by the government and I have access to weapons. Wait, what? What the hell? Right? Uh, or you say, you know what? Actually, I used to be a professional lion tamer, but the but you know the market has kind of fallen out for that one. You make up some kind of obvious lie. We talked about this with the teasing a couple of weeks back. Make up some kind of obvious or interesting lie. Not to lie about what you do. Not to obfuscate, but because literally anything is more interesting than... I'm an accountant. Um, I, I work for a large company. And they pay me my shekels for counting beans. Right? Like, so boring. So make up something a little bit more interesting. And, of course, she's going to push back and be like, no, 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 no. Like, really, though, what do you do? And then, at that point, you can give her some kind of vague thing. Um, I work in finance. Good enough, right? Or uh, I, work, I work in education. Or uh, I, do, I do a few things. I, you know, I... I work mostly in audio and video production, something like that. And you don't have to tell her your exact job title or the company that you work for, anything like that, because those details are boring. Instead, you leave a, a little bit of a question mark. You don't lie. I mean, except for the, the joke lies, right? But that's, that's a different thing. That's not lying about what you do. That's creating some kind of fun role play fantasy between the two of you. However... You, even when you're telling her the truth, you keep it interesting. You keep it a little bit mysterious, a little bit, huh, that's cool, but I don't know all the details. I'm curious to find out more. Okay, well, you know, maybe we can talk a little bit more about it on the date if you find it interesting. Okay, there you go. So use the mystery to your advantage. Our next one, excitement and newness. This goes back to being boring. You need to be a little bit more exciting. You need to have something I told a girl I would take her on an adventure a month ago, saw her again this week, and she's still asking me about the adventure. Perfect. Perfect. Why does that work so well? Because an adventure, that sounds exciting. Also, I don't know what kind of adventure we're going to go on. I bet it's something new and fun that I've never tried before. Wow. Wow. It's almost like Papa Jack knows exactly what he's talking about, and I'm giving you the golden advice right here. Yes, that's correct. So, excitement, newness. These things are fun. You can use words like that, like adventure, like uh, a surprise, like uh, uh, even use the word mystery, right? You can, you can use these things in your conversation, in your flirting, to make things more interesting, to make it feel new, even if... Uh, so this, this is an example that I've used many times in the live streams about many different things. Um, when I was living out in, in the sticks in the middle of nowhere in Incheon, my buddy Stallion was living there too. And he created this whole brochure about this small little town. Like it was so small. You could literally walk across the whole thing in about 10 minutes. And he created this brochure of all the great things to see and to do out there and how cool it was and how fun it was and how exciting and new it is because they have never been to this place before. Because again, why would they ever go there? It's a small little place in the sticks, but it's new. And if you can frame it as exciting too, all of a sudden, soul seems so old hat. I've already been to most places in Seoul, but I bet you've never been here. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. What are we going to find there? Ah, listen, there's a lot that the brochure doesn't tell you because we could only fit so much on the page, but I guarantee you, I'll show you something that you've never seen before. And then you just, you know, you take her to like some fancy local Mexican place or something like so just have, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be that serious. It doesn't have to be that serious. All that matters is that it's exciting, that it's new, that there's a mystery, right? The same way that like a surprise box, what's in the box doesn't matter nearly as much as just the excitement of opening the box, except maybe at the end of seven. Then it really mattered, but not going to go there. So the next thing that's very important to women, this is critical, especially for you younger guys, 
emotional and social IQ. If you've been raised online, if you've been raised using smartphones basically since middle school, and you're much more comfortable texting than taking an actual phone call or having a conversation like this or maintaining eye contact with somebody while you're talking to them, this is going to be a hard one. This is going to be a big hurdle for you to leap because this is critical. Women begin bonding on their emotional and social levels very early on, and it becomes the single guiding factor for them to learn how to pick out the right friends or the wrong friends, the right men or the wrong men, how to best understand a situation or how to know when to get the hell out of there. And if you don't have good emotional and social intelligence, it's going to be very obvious to her. And this is the biggest part. If you're awkward, she doesn't know if you're just an awkward teddy bear or if you're an axe murderer. There's no way for her to know. So the red flag is the same in her mind. If you are demonstrating that you are socially inept, that you're not well calibrated, that you don't have basic emotional understanding, you're essentially telling her you might be a serial killer. That, hard to believe, is not the best way to get a girl interested in going on a date with you. So you definitely need to pay attention to your emotional and social intelligence and how you're coming across in these conversations, in these interactions. Next up, clear communication. All right, this one's a weird one because <sighs> clear communication to women and clear communication to men are two completely different things. They are polar opposites. However, remember what we said at the beginning about her being able to open you up by just saying hi and you having to actually put in work to learn what to do to impress her? Same thing here. She's never going to understand how men communicate because... She doesn't have to. There's no evolutionary reason for it. There's no social benefit to her for it. There's no financial or romantic benefit. It doesn't matter one bit. You, however, do need to learn how women communicate. And women communicate much differently than men. Women communicate based on feeling. And they want a clear communication, but not the same way that a man does right? If you ask a guy, you say, oh, hey, let's hang out. Let's hang out this weekend. All right, cool. What you want to do? Uh, how about we go to, how about we go to this bar on Friday? I finish work at eight o'clock. Let's meet there at nine. Cool. Done. Finished. Direct. Clear, right? Doesn't work that way. At least not with women. Works great with men. However, with women, Instead, what you do is you, you create a little bit more. You still have those same things. The basic stuff stays in there, right? But you're like, listen, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been really busy these days, but I think I can make time to pencil you in. So we're creating like a little bit of a, 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 a fear of losing out. Oh, this might be my only chance. I think I can pencil you in for Friday after I finish work. It's usually pretty busy on Friday, so I'm going to finish kind of late. But you think you can you think you can make it to this bar by 9 o'clock? Okay, good. Because I have something very special planned at this place on Friday at 9. Make sure that your schedule stays clear there because this is going to be something that you never want to miss. All right, And if you miss this, you're going to be kicking yourself for the rest of your life thinking, why, oh, why didn't I do this? It's about creating a story, a shared journey. It's about creating an emotional high and an emotional low. And you can do all that with the exact same basic building blocks, but add in the other stuff. Add in the, the frills and the, and the storytelling and this and that, and things like that. Make it more colorful. Make it more interesting. I do want to throw in a quick warning here. Some of you guys are going to be thinking to yourself, oh, great. I know how to do that. I'll just tell ChatGPT, hey, here's the basics. Write me a pretty message about it. You can do that. You can. Okay. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. But 
what I would caution you on is that you need to learn from it. You need to learn the same principles, the same ones that I'm teaching you now, because no matter how good chat GPT is at it or, you know, whatever, you've got your like auto Riz or something. I think Paul said he's going to develop an app to do that as well. Look, you can have that and that might get you out on the date, but you still have to do the things on the date. You still have to meet her in person for any of this to work. So it's critical that you learn this stuff because again, even if all your messaging is perfect, you get her out on the date, but then you don't have the right emotional and social intelligence. You're not congruent because the way that you were texting before is different from how you're speaking now. She's going to see it as a red flag. You're a serial killer. I'm sorry, Paul, please put that back up. I, I just needed to... Okay. Jack, if women communicate indirectly and via chat, we try to be direct at the same time being funny and interesting. Direct to... Okay. Why some of them just don't want to set a date and tell that needs more time chatting and getting to know about each other. That's that's that that's absolute bullshit. That's absolute bullshit. Right? Like, no, no, no. Listen, if she's interested, then she's she's already interested. And if she's not, what's the best way to overcome this type of girl? Or best to just move on, right? So here's the thing. In that situation, what you're doing is you're just you're just shooting your shot, right? And then and it's, if some girl like Situation by situation, of course, right? As I'm talking here, I'm painting with the broadest of possible brushes of all 3.8 billion women in the world. Obviously, this isn't always the case. However, for the most part, listen, if a girl says something like, oh, I need more time chatting, I need more time talking to you or something, I assume that you don't mean within the first couple of messages, right? Because... If it's within the first couple of messages, that's fine. Your goal is actually to move her first off, off of the app onto chatting application, Kakao or WhatsApp or get get her number, SMS if you're in America. I don't know why America insists on being so fucking old. Yeah, we're going to send SMS messages. Oh, my God. Anyway, doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you're doing. You need to get off of the app and onto that other thing as quickly as possible. And then from there, you aim to set up the date quickly. If you get the feeling, if you know your types, which we're going to get to in a minute, if you know your types and you know that you are dealing with a complete prude, right? Maybe she's like, she's 19 and she's never even been on a date in her life. Read the situation, right? She's going to need a little bit more time, a little bit more talking, a little bit more getting to know each other. That's fine. And you know what? If if you find yourself in that situation, say, that's cool. Do you know what, though? I feel like we'd be able to get to know each other a little bit better over a phone call or over a video call or something like that. Let's move over to that. Make sure that, you know, we get along well. Perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. However, you need to learn the telltale signs of, if she's interested but just needs a little bit more time and comfort or if she's wasting your time and just slow rolling you to death because both of those are possible based on the description that you gave me. And I can't give you a 100% answer of which it definitely is. You need to learn the types. You need to learn how to read the situation, how best to understand what to do in those cases, right? But... As a general rule, unless she fits into that really small category, she's just wasting your time. All right. Oh, or she might be keeping you around as a plan B, right? Maybe she's she's got a date with with Chad later on, but then she's like, eh, but you know, Chad might flake. Chad might get a better date than me. So let's keep this guy around for like maybe that one flakes. And you don't ever want to be somebody's plan B, right? So don't don't deal with that. All right. <clears throat> the last thing on here for the female psychology part is she needs to see strong leadership out of you. Now, what I mean by that is you need to be, first of all, you need to be leading the conversation. And if you don't yet know how to lead the conversation, you need to go over to, to my blog at The Soul Player. There you can read the articles of the Game in a Nutshell. It's completely free over there. You can see the entire thing, not just the art of the approach, but also 
Conquering Conversation, where I break down step by step all of the different parts of the conversation. I give examples of those things. You need to learn how to read a conversation. Now, that article is written towards in-person conversations, but the same basic principles apply. You need to understand when you're showing something, when you're asking something. You need to learn how to push and pull. You need you need to learn how to actually ask her on the date. Figure that out. Say, hey, let's do this thing. Not, hey, do you want to like maybe meet sometime and do something? Because that's that's the weakest possible leadership. That's the opposite of leadership. You're literally asking her to lead so that you can follow. Not it. Absolutely does not work. Do not do that. You need to show decisiveness, strong leadership. Hey, there's a thing that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I need somebody to do it with. And I think that you would really enjoy it. Have you ever heard of Lagavulin? I want to go on a Lagavulin tasting tour. She's like, what? No. What's Lagavulin? And be like, now listen, it's the best thing you'll ever put in your, well, maybe the second best thing you'll ever put in your mouth. And play with that, okay? Hey, when do you want to meet? No. Hey, let's meet this time. Let's meet this day. Let's do this thing. You need to be leading the conversation in a strong and affirmative way. That is the best thing you can do. Now, if she starts to push back a little bit, she's like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, I can't do that day. Or like, wait, I don't I don't know about this thing. Then toss it right back. Be like, okay, cool. So what are you thinking then? Right? If somebody asks for the mantle of leadership, here you go then, have it. No? Okay, didn't think so. Right. So, anyway, let's do this then. Right? That's the easiest way to deal with that quickly is to just don't bend over. Don't bend over. Don't bend over and take it. Right? Like, if she says, like, wait, 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 why are you deciding everything? Toss it to her and not angry. But say, okay, cool. That's fine. I didn't even want to do this. Great. You tell me. What are we doing then? What's the plan? And then if she doesn't take it and run with it, then, right, you take it right back. And if she does take it and run with it, it's probably a red flag, right? She's one of those uh, strong women. I I would watch out for that. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to deal with that. But that said, let's now move on to some easy fixes that you can start applying. Oh my God, this lesson has gone so long. All right, that's fine. That's fine. This is good stuff. This is going to help you guys out very uh, very quickly too because these are easy, quick fixes that you can start applying today. First, know the types. Know the types. You need to know the different types of women. If you don't, if you're just wandering around saying, I just want anyone who wants to touch my willy, then that's not going to work out well for you, right? So you need to know the types. If you don't know them yet, again, you can go over to the blog. It's totally free on there. You can learn about all the different types. You get the short version. You get the text version, right? Uh, and if you want the video version, uh, the kid's not here. Damn it, the kid. The kid's not here today, but we have we have a special coming up very soon within the next 24, 48 hours. I don't know. He's not here, so I can't check it to make sure. Soon, soon, very soon. We have a special coming up very soon, specifically for the types course that you can get it for practically nothing. And you can get the longer video versions of that. Or you can start learning about them today on the blog, totally free, thesoulplayer.com. And it's right there at the top, the types of Korean women, but it applies globally. It's all it's all the women. Next, you need to inject fun and excitement into any conversation you're having. You need to be able to create, artificially create highs and create lows. You need to create a fun opening line and it doesn't need to be the same every time. It doesn't need to be different. It doesn't need to be amazing. It doesn't need to be terrible. It doesn't need to be anything specific. It just needs to be fun. It needs to be exciting. It needs to be new. It needs to have some mystery. It needs to have some excitement. It needs to have something to it. It doesn't even matter what it is. It Hey, do you think you're more of a dog person or a cat person? Me, I'm more of a cat person. Oh, well, that's just perfect. Because all the dog type girls like it rough. You know, or what, like, fucking anything. That's stupid. And that's still more interesting than, 
hey, what's up? Right? Like anything to inject some fun, to inject some excitement, to make her pay attention. You can use GIFs for this. You can use memes. You can use all sorts of stuff, but it does need to get her attention. Because if you don't have her attention, how can she possibly become attracted to her? To you? How can you possibly show her anything about yourself if you don't have her attention? So use fun, use excitement, get her attention ASAP. Next, you need to... That was supposed to be emotional intelligence and congruence, but then I moved congruence down. So demonstrate your emotional intelligence. Demonstrate that you understand situations, that you are socially capable. Demonstrate that you know this stuff, that you understand how conversations work, how, how interactions happen, that you're not being weird and jumping from thing to thing, that you're not just out of the blue being like, hey, let's meet at a bar, right? Like, no, 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 slow it down, right? Like, calm down. If you don't know how to have conversations like that, I highly recommend that you, again, the kid, I really wish that the kid were here, go over to realjacknorth.com, sign up for a call with me. By the time that you have a free call with me, we'll have the Dating Skills Mastery course up and ready for you guys, again, as cheap as I can possibly make it, to give you everything you need, including my word-for-word -word dating script that I used to use when I was dating. So... That's absolutely going to help you out. You need to be able to demonstrate your emotional intelligence, your social calibration, and the fact that you understand women and you understand yourself, which understanding yourself, congruence is confidence. If you if you get this, – this is a mistake that a lot of guys make, is they get these, these perfect pictures done up and they get a perfect bio written for them by somebody else, and then – they start getting matches, but then they get onto the actual messages and it's a different person because it is, because it is a different person. It's different than the person who wrote the bio. So it's incongruent and it's possible you might get through the messaging phase, especially if you got a little bit of help, like inside the Discord community, guys help you out with that stuff. But if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have confidence in what you're saying, confidence is congruence, congruence is confidence, then it's going to come across either in the messaging or on the date if you actually get out there and it's ultimately going to end up in failure. So you need to figure out, first of all, who the hell you are. You need to figure that out first and foremost. If you don't know who you are and if you don't accept yourself and understand yourself, then you can't possibly demonstrate any of your emotional intelligence. You can't possibly have a high social IQ because you don't even know who you're supposed to be. You don't know what part you're playing in any of this. So figure out yourself first. Figure out the, the congruence bits. I've run through that in literally every weekly live stream that we've done for about the last year. I've harped on congruence and today is no different because congruence is your confidence and confidence is your key. Finally, take it offline. I've said this now a couple of times, but take it offline. The guys who are, like Crow said earlier, being over eager by talking too much or they're being too slow by just jumping into those weird interview questions and not getting it offline. Listen, take it offline. Once you're meeting in person, you stand a hundred X better chance of actually creating a connection than you do while you're on an app where she's already talking to dozens of other guys. And you might think, Oh, well, she's not talking to dozens of other guys. Oh yes, she absolutely is because literally every guy who she swipes right on is a match except for maybe the top 10% or so, but she's talking to lots of other guys. You're on there. You're getting, you're in the middle of a group chat, basically, but you don't get to see what everybody else is saying. Get it offline immediately, as quickly as you possibly can, and never look back. It should stay offline after that. There might be a little bit of texting in between dates, but mostly just to set up the next date. Chatting over text doesn't happen until you're in some kind of relationship. And if you've already gotten there, then you don't need to worry too much about this anymore, do you? So 
if you're having trouble with some of this stuff. If you want to know more about how you can personally create the best strategy for you. If you want to learn how to be more congruent, more confident. If you want to learn which types are the best for you. If you want to learn how to better show your emotional and social intelligence, or maybe you don't have any yet and need to develop some, the best thing you can do is go over to realjacknorth.com right now. realjacknorth.com. Where is it? There it is realjacknorth.com, and you can sign up there for a free call with me. I will talk to you one-on-one -on -one and personally help you to figure out what it is that you need to do to better start dating the women that you want in your life. Now, whew, that was a 45-minute long lesson. That's a lot of talking. Let's move it over. Let's move it over into the Q&A. Uh, Paul, you got this? I think I do. Excellent. And then we also have our friend Julius around. Julius! Yo, what's up? All right. Let me um, move this stuff and get you guys set up so that I can get in my uh, in my Papa Bear chair. Let's move you over here. Get set up. Let's see. There we are. That's pretty good. All right. How are you boys doing today? Doing all right. Just here. Yeah? Rocking and rolling? Yep, yep. Nice. Enjoying the hot, sticky Korean summer. Oh, hot, sticky summer is the best kind of summer. <laughs> Double on tundra. I love it. Oh, <laughs> didn't see that one coming. <laughs> How about you, Paul? How are you doing over there? Doing pretty good. It's been a hectic couple of weeks. Yep, yep. Same here. I've been kind of working my ass off this entire time. Yeah. Me no like it. Paul, you need to come here. We gotta have beers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we can do that here. Cheers, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Paul, what is that? These are some Swedish strawberry lime ciders. Huh. That actually sounds pretty good. It's actually pretty okay. Awesome. Now, tastes like candy. Tastes like candy. Ah, but candy with alcohol. Exactly. So, Paul, you have the, the questions today, right? Yes, I do. Okay, beautiful. So, hit us with... Whichever one you want first. Um, okay, so here's one. It says, uh, what is the hardest truth lesson you have learned about the female nature? As this, this isn't, mm, this is partially about female nature and this is also partially just the reality, like in society in general, as a man, you are only worth whatever you bring to the table today. Not what you brought yesterday, not what you brought last year, not what you might bring a year from now. You are only ever worth what you bring today. And as a result, this is, this is a, an issue that a lot of guys end up having, especially when they get into longer-term relationships with girls who aren't the right types for them, is you start off by bringing something that she wants or that she needs in the moment, and then you stop bringing that thing or she stops needing it over time. And loyalty does not exist among women. Not the same way that it does among guys. Not even close. Like, I have guy friends who helped me out back when I was in university, like 15, 16 years ago. I haven't even spoken to them since then. But if they called me up and they were like, hey, man, I fucked up. I need a place to crash for a month. And I'm in, I'm like, for some reason, I'm in Seoul. I'd be like, all right, look, dude. We'll figure something out. I'll get you. I'll get you set up. We'll. I either get you on an air mattress or on the sofa, or I'll help you find a place. I'll put you up on a 
in like some some apartment on Craigslist or whatever. Like I would jump to their defense and absolutely help them, even though the guy hasn't done anything for me lately, but he did help me before. And that exists among men. That does not exist with women. That doesn't exist at all. And it doesn't exist for you among women either, no matter what your relationship is with them. If she's your girlfriend, she's your, she's even your wife, doesn't matter, doesn't exist. Except for maybe your mom. Your mom will probably tolerate pretty much anything and still take you back. But that's the one exception. And that's the exception that proves the rule. So yeah, that's definitely the, the hardest and saddest lesson that I've had to learn. How about you, Julius? What do you think? Um, I think mine's about, about as bleak. Um, I find women... Oh, my fucking God. I'm going to the cam. I find women to... And from a very young age, women will like the douchebag no matter what. Regardless of culture, age, anything, any of that. Um, and they will... It doesn't matter if this guy is is in grade school or middle school, and he's years like a, uh, he's a he's a he's a guy who's been held back once, two or three times. They will fucking go nuts for him, no matter what. If he's at the the bottom of the barrel, he's worthless socially. He's he lives in a trailer park, but if he's a good looking dude and he's a douchebag, he's gonna get all the women. Uh, and it's like that. Uh, I think these guys tend to be the exception to you have to bring this much. I really feel for a lot of guys, uh, if you're kind of subpar looking or you don't have a lot going on personality wise, uh, you have to bring all this extra stuff. Right. But if you're like these guys, they just happen to be good looking, but they're dicks, but they have nothing to offer. The world is your oyster, at least with women who have this kind of a personality type. I'll give you a quick story. Uh, there was this one guy, his name was Emilio, and he was in my fifth grade class in elementary school. Fucking and Emilio. He was held back two years. I only found this out much more recently, and I'll tell you how. Uh, the guy, like all the girls of them, all across the grade, not just my class, but the entire grade, right? So that's a lot of girls. And he didn't really pay attention. He didn't really care about them or anything. And it made sense because, you know, he was older and he was still a kid. Um, and then it turns, and all the girls, and all these girls that ended up liking them, they ended up growing up to be nurses, engineers, teachers. They all made whatever kind of cookie cutter guys they, they meet. This guy, he ended up going to prison for killing a dude in 2001, 2002, serving a life sentence. Okay. And I found out that he was only two years older because I looked him up on, like, so he was mysteriously not on any social media. And uh, yeah, he was actually two years older. So he kind of kept that as a secret from everyone. Um, so I really feel that, and I saw this recently too, with this guy that, that Jack met, I don't think they will ever get along ever. Uh, he's a douchebag from the other day. And he met, uh, my girlfriend's best friend. And after all that, guess what happened? They're going out. They're going out. Uh, and then we fought again and I sent her the video of what happened and guess what? They still met up. And that's just how some women are. They will die for these douchebag types, even if they offer absolutely nothing. But if they bring douchebaggery and I wouldn't even say the guy's good looking, but some level of confidence, they will go to town with that. I'm going to push back a little bit. and Well, you always push back. But yeah. I, I push back with what I said to you with this sure. story, that the exception of this are douchebags and yeah. that women will always have – a weakness for these kinds of men. Yeah, yeah, and they do, they do. Uh, but what I'm going to push back on is that they don't bring anything. Um, what they bring is they bring some kind of some kind of mystery or some kind of excitement because there is there is a, a natural kind of well, morbid curiosity of like, hold on a second, you've been fucking held back twice in elementary school. What the hell is going on? And you're still alive. Like yeah. you haven't Darwin's yourself out of a tree or some shit and a single mother. But the thing is like here mm -hmm. is that my bringing to the table isn't the confidence or, or, or whatever it's, it's financially it's, it's the, it's what men traditionally need to bring to the table. It's, yeah. it's what you said it's what you are worth today. Yeah. And, and that guy's worthless, but he's got that, 
that douchebaggery that that women a lot of women will misinterpret as confidence i call it false confidence it's it's, yeah. it's what they think is confidence but it's not it's like when when a guy thinks is love but it's not you're just marrying the same girl you've known forever that's you know that's not it yeah yeah no i i completely understand that um and it, it's something, but it's never, it's never long lasting and it's not stable because it's not built on anything, right? That kind of false confidence. So like in, in the case that you gave earlier of Emilio, that false confidence is built entirely on the fact that he just doesn't want people to know that he's been held back twice and he doesn't want to talk much and then accidentally reveal like, oh yeah, yeah. My whole life fucking sucks. So instead, he seems mysterious. He seems exciting, and nobody knows what's going on. So it must be interesting. It's the it's the surprise. It's the secret. It's the mystery. And it's like, yeah, but it's built on him not wanting to tell you the real situation because the real situation is awful. But but it's also the fact that that he's attractive, right? So, so yeah. we will forgive anything. If the guy's attractive enough, an attractive douchebag. Yeah, that's definitely a big part of it. And again, built on nothing, right? Because oh, attraction yeah. fades over time. Why would he? Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a shtick. You know, he reveals the, the the gimmick. You know, the game's over, right? Yeah. Actually, you guys, you guys fell in love with an old dude. <laughs> what? <Wah, wah. laughs> uh, Paul, what, what about you? What's the what's the hardest or the worst truth that you had to learn about? I think mine is more in the same direction as yours. Uh, so what I was, the reason I chose the question out of the ones that were there because I had an answer, mm -hmm. which would be that what the girl feels on Monday towards you is not what she's going to be feeling on Tuesday. Yeah, uh, the fact that girls are a emotional roller coaster beyond anything mm -hmm. and then like being in a relationship means that you are on along for the ride on that roller coaster and you don't know if that roller coaster is going up 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 or if it's going off the cliff tomorrow yeah and no matter how well things seems to be going it all can change in an instant i think that's one of the hardest truths i've learned yeah throughout my years i, I think another one i want to add is 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 how caddy and how uh, almost uh, I would say I don't, I don't know about tribal, but they're very backstabbing. They're they're like cats, um, yeah. You know that. And and I, I I thought like when I saw us in college, I was like, oh, they're acting like they're still in high school. And then when I started, when I came to Korea, all the twenty somethings were acting like that. And then when I started teaching, as young as kindergarten up to high school, the girls all acted this way. You know, and this is cross-cultural. This is girls from Europe, from South Africa, from Korea, from the United States, from all different social aspects. And they all acted this way. And I'm just like, this is just built into them. This is this is not, you know, Americans or, 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 or Westerners. This is mm -hmm. all women, all ages, all cultures. Uh, like Jack said, you know, guys will have each other's back. Paul and I, we could go two weeks without talking. We'll message each other. But hey, what's up? We'll be like, cool, whatever. It's a video call. With a woman, if you don't put the effort in and keeping up this friendship, it, they, they, they will stop talking. They will be like, oh, well, you know, she's probably doing this and she's probably doing that. And I won't talk first because that's blah, blah, blah. They get so caught up in all this stuff. Another example is when um, cards, every time it's his birthday, we just say happy birthday. Yeah. And he says the same thing back to me. His wife, when she has to message happy birthday, she has to write these, these essays in, in birthday cards and meet up in person. And it's, it's a lot of work. It's exhausting. And for what? Like, you don't need to put in that much effort for, I mean, if you guys are just in each other's lives, cool. I tell, you know, asshole over there, here, here's a beer. You suck. Happy birthday. Um, that's it. Like, you know, but women, they don't, they don't have that. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very different thing. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's wild, wild, isn't it? It is, it is, it is, it is. That's when I came here and I saw that it was just like this, this thing that's ingrained in them and it's not cultural or racial or, or whatever. It's, it's just them. 
Yeah. It's gender specific. That's, that's wild. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of scary, isn't it? It, it is. It, it absolutely is. And I remember seeing my Icelandic ex fighting with her Icelandic friends and the Koreans and the South Africans and the Brits and all of them just, the Americans, all of them going at it at each other. And you see little Korean girls doing the same thing. You're like, man, <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Doesn't matter where you go. Nobody is immune to nature, man. Yep. Yep. Doesn't matter who you call God or what language you speak or whatever. It's it's uh, it's there. Yeah. Can't fight it. All right, Paul, what you got for us next? Uh, what's the difference between dating younger girls in their early 20s versus late 20s and early 30s in regards to like psychology and how the dynamic of dating works? Ooh, totally different. Yeah, I would say the same. Like for me. Uh, I think it both goes with the age of the girls, but also the age of yourself. Um, I feel that now, like if I'm dating someone older, like late twenties, early thirties, it's oftentimes more targeted dating. It's rather than, this is not just dating for fun. Like I remember dating when I was in my early twenties and it was like, yeah, this is never going to last, but we're going to have fun for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, now when you get older, and especially for women, it seems that way. It's more like, okay, now I want to find someone to settle down with. And everything mm -hmm. everything becomes much more like relationship focused very early than yep. when you date the younger girls that know that this is just going to be for fun or to get experience or whatever. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's, it's um, older women, late 20s, especially their early 30s, uh, they're more marriage minded marriage focused they're not there to waste time although the better thing about them is that they know exactly what they want so if they don't want marriage and they just want to fuck and go out they'll let you know exactly that's what they want there and they have no qualms of uh, letting you know whereas uh the maturity gap is there so with younger women they're more likely to play around and do stupid things and play games play mind games um you know any of that other shit. Jack. Uh, Crow says sex is better with late twenties girls. I don't know why, but man, every girl in that age bracket has been the best. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, experience is a hell of a teacher, yeah. isn't it? Oh yeah, they're like right. thirty by then, you know, versus the youngins. You know, they don't, yeah. they don't know what the you're doing. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the the difference based on the lesson that I taught today. The biggest difference between them is just that the younger they are, the more exciting and new things will seem to them because they just haven't done things before, right? And so if, you, if you're talking to a girl who's 23, then you can genuinely ask her, like, hey, have you ever tried whiskey like an actual good whiskey not like a, a shot of like fucking jack daniels or jaeger or something like an actual good whiskey and she'll be like what no i didn't know that there was good whiskey like okay cool right but if you're talking to a girl who's in her late 20s early 30s then there's a, a very reasonable chance that she's gonna be like yeah in fact my favorite whiskey is whatever, Lafroy, or, you know, I really like a, a nice McAllen neat or something, you know, like, who knows? She's going to have been around the block a bit more. Now, you can use that to find more things to bond on and more points in common. So that's kind of the trade-off there is it's not as exciting and new, but it is something that you can use to actually build up the relationship a bit more and to talk to her about these things and to share experiences more. Um, that's actually, that's one of the biggest differences right there is just the difference between showing her an experience like you would with young girls or sharing an experience like you would with older girls. So something that maybe you both enjoy. Great. Let's do that thing together. Let's make it a special thing between me and you. Cool. Um, but with young girls, then it's like, you know, everything, everything's, everything's new. It's all, it's all the first time for, for this, for that. And like, oh, I've never played beer pong before. Oh, I'm scared. How do I do it? Right. Like, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's probably the biggest difference is that, at least from a psychological level, is that things aren't as new anymore once they're older, but 
they're much more open to finding things that they can share together to hold together as things that you both enjoy. One thing I want to add is uh, the maturity mm. <laughs> between the two. When you hang out with, say you're like us, where we used to hang out with late twenties, early thirties, sometimes or mid thirties. And then you go and hang out with someone who's 21. You're going to know that motherfucker is 21. And, and when you're dating, it's, it's like you're almost dating like a child. You see the immaturity, how stupid they act, how everything's such a big deal, how they don't know how to control their emotions, how they're really catty. It's quite exhausting, in my opinion. So you kind of want someone who's more on your wave. Like when you get older, you chill out more. You want someone who's more on your energy level and, and, and wants to kind of just do more of your thing. Like the kind of person would rather, you know, uh, uh, get some coffee and have a quiet, easy dinner in the evening rather than go clubbing all night like they would. Yeah. So. Well, it, it definitely depends on the girl, right? Because you met, yeah. you met uh, that girl who I worked with uh, a couple of, a couple of months back, maybe. Oh yeah. When I first came here, right? Yeah. 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 And she's like 22. She's calm. She's cool. She's mature. She's put together sure. and like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with dating a girl like that. No, 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 no. It's just, it's just, to me, it, it, it seems to be more often than not. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I mean, so, like, if, if you're dating the woo girls. Oy, yeah. Yeah. You're working with woo girls, like, oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so dirty. I remember once I was working with them when I was 29. I was like, oh, my God. They, I feel 29. <laughs> Paul, do you so, know, do you know woo girls? I know the concept of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's the girls who like for everything in the world. They're like, "Oh my God, let's have another shot!" Woo! Yeah, yeah. exactly. Stupid. Yeah, they're they're cringe factories. Just stay away from them. Yeah, they all for yeah. nothing new. They like, what? <laughs> Woo! Like, oh, come on. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, let's let's move on. Let's do another one. What's up next, Paul? Okay, so so there are three questions here that kind of falls into the same category. Uh, I'll quickly read them and then I'll just rephrase the question, I guess. Okay. So the first one is, why is it when I argue with my girlfriend, she's so illogical? I don't really understand. Uh, why does a girl say one thing and then does another thing? For instance, she says she only dates a guy taller than six feet, but then she goes on a date with a dude that's five seven, <laughs> Or that looks doesn't matter, but she's only dating good looking guys. And the last one here is, what is the number one thing most guys misunderstand about female psychology. And I will say that, that they have no idea what they actually want. And I think that kind of, so the reason why I want to group them together is because the thing that guys, so for us, so men in general tend to think way more logically than women do. And that is because for women, it's like in the way of psychology, everything connects to emotions. So like the reason why it seems so illogical is because she's not arguing with you on logic. She's arguing with you based on emotions. The reason why she says she only dates tall guys and then goes out with a shorter one is because that guy made her feel some emotions. And the number one thing that I think most guys understand is that women tend to think way more emotionally than logically, at least in my opinion. I yeah, completely agree. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly it. Uh, if, if she says, I only date dudes who are 183, six feet tall and good looking guys, but then she dates five seven Tom Cruise, it's because Tom Cruise is also really attractive, right? So, um, she'll make an exception, but that guy has to offer something else, like you said, emotion, but I also think good looks too. I think a lot of it. The answer to all three of those questions is the same, which is it just comes down to how she feels in that moment. Because whatever she feels in that moment is reality. It's not about it's not about thinking through different things. It's not about considering the possibilities or anything else. It's about how she feels at that very moment. Uh, and this is this actually goes back to what Paul was saying earlier about how 
how she feels in the relationship on Monday is not how she's going to feel about it on Tuesday, or at least not necessarily. I'm like, yeah, that's because the way that she felt on Monday was 100% true and 100% real and 100% correct in that moment. But then on Tuesday, something else happened, and then maybe, you know, like you, you say something that just like turns her off for some reason. She's like, ugh. And then suddenly, whoop, 180 degrees, because now how she feels in this moment is the reality. And the reality has changed. So. Yep. That's the, that, the that's all it is. killer of relationships and flings or whatever you want to call them. It's just, I know, I know it's happened all three of us here. Like one minute, you're like her god, this king, her emperor. And then the next day, it's kind of like you get blocked and ghosted. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's just how they, are. It's how they are. It happens. It happened to a friend of ours in the chat, actually, where, you know, they had this, this steamy one week thing and then boop, it went up in smoke. Uh, it's just how they I are. was going to say it ha happened to me right here in this apartment. Yeah. Just a couple yeah, months yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. It happened to me once. Uh, uh, I was, this is years ago. I was, um, you know, just had a really nice steamy relationship three months and just disappeared. Who knows? You know, I, I had a, a girl who I met at a beach party one summer, Lena. She, she has a Korean name, but we're not going to deal with that. Lena. And Lena and I met at this beach party, and we had a fun weekend there. And then when we got back to town, we, we started dating, and we were meeting up like five times a week or something because I was working right nearby her place, and she was living there alone. And, like, I would just come and crash at her place and go to work in the morning. We're just – just absolutely going at it like rabbits having a blast doing it. And here's the thing is that it was a lot of fun, but after three weeks, it was over, right? And it, it very quickly just, it didn't like go down. It just went and then, boop. Yeah. And then Same it goes over. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't stick around to like find out what was going to happen next because like, in, in this particular choose your own adventure, I chose the right. See ya. Alt F4. Yeah, Alt F4. <laughs> yeah, no, like, see, the thing is, when that first happened to me, I must have been like 23, 24. And I had, like, I used to live in the country. And this girl, she drove two, three hours from Seoul in her car all the way to my place in the countryside because she was just so enamored with me. It was just complete and utter infatuation. We were going at it like rabbits the entire week. She stood, she stayed over night and day. Everything it was freaking insane. And then when she went back to Seoul, it's kind of like back to reality. You know, yeah. cut off contact. Never heard, never saw her again. Fucking wild. Yeah, I think that's also the thing. Like for for some girls or girls in general, maybe too. It's like when they decide like, this is just the fling, then it's gonna be very hot and steamy for a while, and then they just completely ghost you and disappear afterwards yeah, yeah, yeah. like they decide, they've decided that this is something that's going to last for say three weeks when i'm here on vacation or mm -hmm. it's going to last until i go home and then that's what it does and then yeah. oops, you're gone oh yeah. yeah vacation hookups are fun and whenever the girl knows what it is and acknowledges it then it's awesome but you know she doesn't always she doesn't always know and she's like, I don't know. We'll just play it by ear. We'll just see how I'm feeling at the time, which just means, da -da 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 -pop. right? Like, okay. Enough to cliff like wily e. coyote, just super fast. Boop. Yeah, and then you're just left there running in the air, like what? Yeah. What? And then, what? Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> and she runs off. Yeah, like the, like the road runner, right? So it, yeah, it happens, uh, and that's just how women are. They're like, Paul said, Monday, Tuesday, that's. It's fucking, it's, it's brutal, but once you understand that and get it, and that's what they do, then life will just be so much easier. Because when it happens, you're kind of like, oh, shit, Jack, let's go hang out. This happened. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now, real quick, I'm just going to address the, the whenever I'm arguing with her, she seems so illogical thing. If, if you're arguing with your girlfriend or with a girl you're dating, 
and you're trying to be logical, um, you need to cut that shit out right now. Like, that's like trying to argue logically with your dog. Like, that's not going to happen. When, when she's in a heated emotional state like that, she's worked up about something. She doesn't, she doesn't want, even if she's not mad at you, right? Even if she's just mad at somebody else or mad at, at something, she doesn't want to hear the answer. She doesn't want her problem solved. She just wants to vent about stuff. She just wants to be heard. And exactly. And that's what I was about to say is one of the most powerful things you can do if if she's upset about something, she's angry about something, the most powerful thing you can do is just listen and then say like, okay, I hear you. I think I understand you. You're mad because this and this and this, right? Did I get that right? And and be be genuine. Don't be condescending. Don't be a dick about it. Don't be like, so you're mad because, and then like try to straw man her arguments or something. Actually acknowledge what she's saying and just say, look, I hear you. I, I totally understand. I get it. That, that, this, I'm about to t teach you guys something. This is the most powerful thing that you can ever do that makes it sound like you really understand somebody that makes you show emotional intelligence. This phrase right here, that must be something that must have felt something this one phrase right here can completely turn an argument into a cuddle session or even a makeup sex session because all that it's doing is it's just saying i hear you i feel that i feel that that must be difficult i get it that's all she wanted that's all she wanted she didn't even want a solution See, guys think in terms of problem, therefore find solution. Nail, therefore find hammer. And women are like, I just want you to know about the nail. I don't need a hammer. I just wanted to let you know that there's a nail and it's really, really bothering me. And I hate this thing. And like, da, 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 da. okay, cool. Totally hear you. Don't offer the hammer. Then whenever she's not looking, I actually take a hammer and just fix the thing, right? Like that's that that's the actual answer, and it's not the one that guys want to hear, right? Because guys guys have, especially these days they've been raised to think like, oh, well, men and women are exactly the same, and so I should be able to talk to her like an equal. And it's like no, you you're you're not understanding. Like talk to her like an equal, as in. You're both grown ass adults who deserve basic human respect and dignity. Sure, but don't talk to her like a peer. Don't talk to her like one of your buddies. That's the wrong thing to do. Because guys, nail, hammer. Girls, nail, 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 nail. And then whenever she's not looking, okay. Right? Uh, I think. I think that's a perfect analogy from the, I can't remember who wrote the book, but uh, m women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Oh, yeah. Uh, so for men, we only talk to our problems when we actually need help fixing it. So if I tell you a problem, that is because I hope you have a solution to my problem. Right. While for women, it's talking about problems is an emotional thing. They sit down mm. in a circle and then, they tell them how they feel and they want validation for the feeling, not for the actual problem. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, it, you see it in practice too. Um, when I, I remember watching this thing with like this, this survival thing with that bear grills hosted where it was men on their Island and women on theirs. And then <laughs> men would just solve the problems and have everything. And I know granted men are more likely to have these survival skill sets. Whereas women, they just complained and complained and complained and cried and they complained some more about it. And and by the end of it, men had like this this mini civilization. A community uh, with yeah. a government in place. Brewery, and everything. Like a brewery and they had this water filtration system and this <laughs> net that would catch fish and this other thing that would grow veggies while the women were just, you know, it was just like school holiday conditions and nothing worked. Uh, they almost died. So like, 
because all they do is complain. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they didn't approach the solution. They just wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Talking does not survive. Does not right solve anything. Right? Well, At least complaining, rather. Sorry. Right, and here's the thing, though, is that that does serve an important evolutionary function for them, which is to better understand their tribe and understand, like, okay, who's who's going to help me raise kids? Who's going to help, you know, deal with the stuff in the village, whatever else? While men are just like, we just fucking solve the problem, right? Because the, the simplest solution is the best solution. Let's just hear. Okay, cool. Baby's crying. Shove something in its mouth. Baby stopped crying. Neat. Win. But, like, that's not actually the right solution, right? So men also have plenty of blind spots, too. And when you look at it from an evolutionary point of view, it makes a lot more sense. But in modern society, it's a weird one. So definitely be aware of that. Be aware of the difference. Don't don't try to if you're having if you're having an argument, don't bring logic into it. Now, if you're if you're talking to your wife about like, oh, how should we invest our money? Should we be looking at, should we be opening IRAs in two countries? Should we be looking at 401ks? Are we looking at traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs? What are we doing here? Should we be putting this money in the S&P? What should we, like, okay, cool. There are times when you can do logic, but most of the time, even on big decisions, like which, which uh, home should we buy? Or something like that. Dude, most men don't even need to go to a showing. Right? Like, most men would just be like, right, just show me the numbers on the paper. And I'll just send an appraiser to that address to make sure that, like, everything's cool. It's all on the up and up. And then, like, I'll just buy it sight unseen almost. Right? Like, doesn't matter to me. Women, it's totally different. It's about the feeling. How do they feel in the home? And then the numbers on the paper don't matter. So even with the big decisions, it's important to keep that stuff in mind, which is why if you're doing a good job of being the right leader that you need in a relationship, when you're, when you're making big decisions like that, the options you put in front of her are ones where if she chooses any of these, I'm okay with them. I've already looked at all of this. All of these make sense. They make sense on paper. I like all the locations. I like this and that and the other thing. Whatever your considerations are, you've already made sure that any of these work. And then you let her feel them out. All right. I think we've got time for maybe one more and then we should probably call it. Yeah, sure. Um, so during the dating process, how self-aware are women? And how do they compare to men? Like most men think very logically and strategically about dating. While how does, what actually goes through the mind of a girl? Both men and women are absolutely self Well, let me rephrase. Both successful in dating, men and women, are absolutely self-aware about the things that are important to the opposite sex. Every woman is incredibly self-aware about her looks. Every woman knows exactly how many pimples she has on her face at any given time. Every woman knows her exact weight down to the tenth of a pound. Every woman knows exactly what outfit makes her look a little bit slimmer, makes her boobs look a little bit bigger. She's very aware of her physical presentation because... For her, that's the most important thing in the dating market. She doesn't have to be self-aware about how congruent she is. She doesn't have to be self-aware about how what she says comes across, about her, her humor levels, about any of this other stuff that we teach you guys about because it doesn't make a fucking difference at all. If you go out with a nine and she's funny... Okay, cool, bonus. She's rich. Okay, cool, bonus. She's a nine. Now, a three, no matter how funny, no matter how rich, no matter how da 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 da, -da no matter how smooth talking, anything else, you're like, oh, cool, you're one of the boys. Yeah, welcome to the group, right? Doesn't matter. 
Now, guys have it backwards, where the physical appearance doesn't matter nearly as much. And, of course, right, it, it, it does play into it, but it plays into it about as much as, like, a girl being funny or a girl being rich or something like that. Guys yeah. have to be self-aware about what they're putting out there, who they're trying to attract, how their personality is showing these things. You have to have good humor. You have to be able to demonstrate certain skills, uh, show these different things, because that's what makes you successful in the dating market. Yeah. That's exactly right. I mean... <laughs> I think that wraps it up pretty nicely. Yeah, and a nice little ribbon tie and a present <laughs> box for, for Christmas. That's Yeah, that's exactly right. Every word of it. All right, cool. Um, well, that was faster than I was expecting. Paul, is there another one on the list still? or? I think we've been through every one that may kind of make sense. Okay. I think. All right, cool. Well, then. In that case, uh, and we don't have any more any more questions from the peanut gallery. Uh, no, we do not. Okay. All right. Cool. By the way, how was our peanut gallery today? It's been quite quiet. I think we've shown most of the comments that's been coming up. Okay. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. So we didn't we didn't get the trolls from last week. No, we did not have the trolls <laughs> from last week. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I missed all that. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, you missed out, <laughs> man. It, and I, I knew that. I knew that. Like the topic title itself was was gonna make some waves anyway. But God, then it's like, okay, cool. Now let me actually teach you all the stuff that the guys last week clearly didn't know. Like, here's a ton of really genuinely useful information that. I would be proud to actually just cut today's lesson out and put it into one of my courses because it's really good, useful information where I break down a ton of stuff. And they're like, I don't want to learn. Man, I don't want to be good. I just want to be a troll. Okay, well, have fun with that. Yep. Enjoy your AI girlfriend. Enjoy proving me right about how Western women are obsolete. Enjoy your pronouns, man. That's really Enjoy your cool. pronouns, bro. In your septum ring. In your uh, pink hair. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, then in that case, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for today. So, Julius, Paul, uh, thank you guys for joining. Truly, I do appreciate it. Especially, Paul, thank you for being my co-host and beautiful Vanna White-esque assistant in the background. Uh, it really means a lot to me. It's very, very helpful. And for those of you who have joined us today on the live stream, thank you for watching. And, uh, oh, by the way, it's, right. if you haven't done it yet, hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you, if you know somebody who's having trouble with online dating, if you know somebody who this information and this message might help, please share it to them, send it to them, because the more people we get this message in front of, the more good that we're doing for the men's community in general and for guys dating in general. So absolutely, please send this around, share this, let other people know the good news. Share the good news, right? Be a, be a, a, a Baptist of Jack or a, what is it? A disciple, a disciple of Jack. Absolutely, share it around. But until next week, guys, Papa Jack out. All right, let's, I forgot that.